Welcome to the Firehouse Roundtable podcast brought to you by the Ventura Fire Foundation. My name is Peter McKenzie. I'm one of the hosts. I'm a retired fire captain with the City of Ventura Fire Department. And I'm Jason Kay. I'm an active fire captain also with the Ventura Fire Department. And we are excited that you are going to spend some time with us at the kitchen table, learning about firehouse issues that we're trying to bring awareness to. Thanks for joining us as we discuss the issues of being a firefighter, both on and off duty, and how it affects us. Let's get right to it. Welcome to another episode of the Firehouse Roundtable. Jason, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a busy week. Just home stuff, work stuff. You know, all the regular stuff. How about you? Uh, same. Yeah, a lot of just busy. I uh, actually was on a podcast this morning as a guest, which is unusual being on the other side of this. But uh, there's a podcast called First Responders for Financial Freedom. I probably butchered that. But um, it's basically firemen who interview other first responders who are running businesses, investing in real estate, doing things out, you know, generating income outside of the fire department. It was extremely interesting to talk to. It's three guys. I think one's a LA County firefighter and the other two are like back east somewhere. But uh, it was interesting. I was I was definitely on there pulling in our podcast and it sounds like maybe they're, they're going to be open to coming on ours. So which would be interesting. So that's a good collaboration. I could see I could see us joining forces for some projects in the future. Yeah, we we talked a fair amount about the foundation because one of the guys was having some issues and he got injured or something. And so it was very interested in like how the foundation supports firefighters and whatnot. So it was a definitely some good exposure for that. So be on the lookout. I, I imagine we'll post about it when it comes out. I have no idea how far they take, how long they take to, to put them out, but yeah. So let's talk about today's guest though, Jim Magnuson. I think everybody knows that name and I'm excited about talking to Jim today because, and it's not just Jim, he's also bringing along Justin and Phil. He's going to talk about their firefighter wellness program that they have. Obviously, Jim's a, a, a board member of the foundation as well. So we're, yeah, pretty pumped about hearing him come on or, or talking to him when he comes on. How about you, Jason? Yeah, what a supporter Jim's always been of of local fire departments. And um, he's always the guy who says, um, on or off duty, whatever's going on, stop in. I'm willing to uh, to help you out and to work on you guys to get you guys healthy. And, you know, he's one of those guys, like I said, he's just supportive. He's supportive of the fire departments and wants us to to maintain our health. I, I think about every time I work out, what would Jim want me to do? And then it's, he focuses so much on injury prevention as well. And so his company is, is all, is all about taking care of us, which is, it's pretty cool that there's people like him supporting us. All right. So we have very special guests that are coming on the show today. And I think everyone in the in our world knows who Jim Magnuson is, but I think I don't know how many people know what he actually does for our, our department, actually you know, other fire departments in the county as well. But Jim has been a friend of the of the foundation, of the Ventura Fire Department for many, many years. He is the type of guy who will basically do whatever he needs to do to help you in his world, which is physical therapy, injuries, trying to get you back to work. And I, I've always been amazed at how much he contributes. And I didn't really understand the full breadth of it until I got hurt. And when I got hurt and I was like, hey, Jim, I got a problem here. I'm not kidding. For like six, nine months, I was going into his clinic and it was out of the goodness of your heart. And uh that meant so much to me, and that just speaks to the type of guy you are. In addition to that, Jim is on the board of directors of the Ventura Fire Foundation. Jim's been a supporter of the foundation many years before he ever was on the board. And I am just incredibly honored and proud to work hand in hand with him now on the on the board and to get him on the podcast and really dive into the work that he's done. And I don't want to ignore the other gentlemen that we have on the podcast either. We have Phil and Justin as well. So we don't normally do intros, but I thought Jim deserved an intro, and I probably didn't do it justice. But Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Pete. I thought I'd get started by doing a little bio of myself. Uh, we were talking earlier, and um, my partners in this business, performance wellness and injury prevention, uh, Justin and Phil, I didn't realize until you said that, that they're about half my age now. It's, it kind of hurts me. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, I started this program way back in 2001 
with the Oxnard Fire Department, and, and then we morphed into working with Ventura City Fire Department in 2007. Um, to back up a little bit further, I'll give you a little bio of a uh, personal bio. Uh, I'm married, my wife Tracy. I met her in PT school. So we're both PTs. Uh, my son Nick is a doctor of physical therapy. So he followed in the footsteps. And my daughter Michelle is a physician assistant at a pediatric orthopedic group. So our family dinners are, are quite interesting when we're talking about work stuff. I live in Thousand Oaks. I initially got interested in the Wellness Fitness Initiative because a physical therapist and a doctor, Cynthia Hentley, came to me with that proposal, again, back in 2001. And we just kind of started from scratch. There was a pilot program starting in Phoenix and I think L.A. And so we decided to do the program up in this area. The whole goal of that program is to improve the wellness and fitness of the firefighters. We want to prevent injury, decrease disability from injuries, and expedite treatment from injuries. So in our program that over the last 23 years, 22 years of testing, we've evolved it uh, to an extent where I've gone to the Redmond Symposium a couple times. That's your guys' union, the IFF uh, Wellness Fitness Seminars. And in talking across the nation to other departments, um, usually it's the peer fitness trainers that are running it. They may have a have or have not a local agreement with the physical therapy or chiropractic in that area, but it is far and few between what the services that we were uh, getting involved with. We have a registered dietitian. Uh, we have Justin. Justin will give a little bio. Uh, Phil, who's a doctor of physical therapy. Uh, we call him Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> we can't trademark that, though. But anyway... We have a lot of resources. And, and Pete, to get to your comment about getting treated, we approach this as we would, uh, Phil and I are both certified athletic trainers, as we would a training room in a college or NFL or whatever you want to call it. We want you guys to look at us as your training room. So if you get injured and we get those injuries taken care of early on, you're less likely to have cumulative trauma injuries. So if you sprain an ankle, and you're limping around on it for a couple months, that might affect your hip or your low back. So our whole goal with you guys is take care of you and make sure that you can play again on Friday nights. I mean, uh, go back to work. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, That's the analogy we use it's like from an athletic standpoint. I like it. I like it. We're going to be fighting to get a word in edgewise here, I think. You, you just laid it all out there all in one sentence. But good job. Yeah. Um, let's give your compatriots the chance to introduce themselves too. How about, how about you, Phil? Yeah, my name's Phil Long. Like Jim said, we're we're both athletic trainers and physical therapists. I I got my education from University of St. Augustine uh, for health sciences. And I started working with Jim about 10 years ago, you know, working with local fire departments. And and it's been a really, you know, really great experience getting the chance to to work with the fire department, really great group of individuals, type A, goal driven. And it's been, you know, it's been a really good experience. But yeah, just as Jim said, you know, we we treat all of the firefighters like, you know, like it's our athletic training room. Like we're trying to get you guys back in these instances to where injuries happen. So awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And then, Justin, how about a quick intro from you? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Justin Redeen. So I'm a tactical strength conditioning coach uh, to the NSCA, which is the National Strength and Conditioning Association. Been working with Jim and Phil for the last probably two years now. Uh, I've gotten a chance to work with the First responder population uh, for about four years now since I've been um, at Sports Academy. I've been involved in the fitness industry since 2010. So I've been kind of dealing with gen pop, athletes, youth performance, uh, kind of from start to finish. Uh, married uh, to my wife, Adina, with three kids. I have a six-year-old, five-year-old, and a year-and-a-half-year-old, so household gets busy. Um, but I mean, my, my, my big passion and my, kind of my part in, in uh, the performance, wellness and injury prevention is just more the performance side. So Jim Phil obviously being uh, very into the medical side, my, my job is more so like the, the meathead side, how to teach people how to lift everything off the floor in a correct way without injuring themselves and kind of how, how to get better um, and prevent injury and also improve performance out um, whatever the, their goals may be, whether it's a fitness goal or whether it's a job performance goal, where they're 
trying to stay on the job for a longer period of time without injury or whether it's trying to get a deadlift PR or a bench press PR, or whatever it may be, any, any, any fitness goals that anybody has, then you know, that's kind of my role is, is, is how can I get them there? I was introduced to your team first by Jim. It's funny to hear you say you started the Oxnard program in 01 because that was the same year I was hired by Ventura Fire. And um, I was excited when I heard you were there and that you came over to the Ventura side of things. Then years later, Phil was one of your was one of your partners. Then Phil went off to doctor school. And now we all get to say Dr. Phil with you, which is fun, too. Uh, and then just recently, and you said, how long ago, Justin, did you start with the company? I believe it was about two years ago, Jim, about. Yeah. yeah so, and now Justin is kind of the the programmer for the workout specifically. He's the one that comes and tortures us and we all, we all have a good time. And then uh, Phil tries to fix us up and then Jim looks at us and goes, hey, when can you make it into the office? Because like Pete said at the beginning, anytime you can make it over there, you just pop in there and he's ready. Like he, he will work on you, whether it's an injury or uh, we have the stair climb. Um, I think when this airs, the stair climb will already have been done. But the guys will go over to Jim and say, hey, I got this huge event coming up. My knees are going to be wrecked. My shins are going to be wrecked. What should I do to prepare? And he'll help you with that stuff, too. So, yeah, I just I really appreciate what you guys have done. It's a definite different world that the fire department is in coming to you guys. I know a lot of times it's, hey, let's take this slow and tenderly and gingerly and get you back to what, you know, your 100% is as opposed to the athlete or the firefighter who is probably the opposite and wants to go back to work too early. So you guys kind of ride that line with us and you and you help us get back to work. Is there anything specific, Pete, you want to ask them about injury prevention or you want to just let them talk on that stuff? Yeah, I, I want to just frame the conversation a little bit. The reason that we're doing this is because, and Jim can speak to this a little, probably with more expertise than I can, but essentially what was happening was firemen, were, we were injuring people. And firefighting is a very physically demanding job. I think everybody kind of understands that. And when the firefighter is not at work, obviously that's bad because for a lot of reasons, but main reason is they want to be at work and it's expensive when they're at home and other people have to fill the spots. And there was, you know, a lot, we were losing a lot of time. So that's kind of how this whole thing came about. And Jim was a bit of a trailblazer in our area, specifically with Oxnard and then with us. But Jim, can you speak to that? Like what, what kind of got this thing started? Like what were the problems we were trying to solve for? Well, you're right, Pete. Um, one of the problems was firefighters were bringing equipment into the stations. And so there was very little oversight on what was happening and who was using it and was equipment appropriate. So uh, through the WFI, they provided grants for the fire stations to beginning to get equipment. Now, let's think 20 years ago what that equipment looked like. It was a treadmill, a universal gym, and I think maybe a bike. That, that was about it. So once they got the equipment, then how do you train them appropriately how to use that? And you guys probably can uh, imagine our first go around, we were telling one of the fire chiefs, yeah, we want to get some gym balls in there, some foam rolls. And in his mind, you can kind of, he was thinking of Tom and Jerry, right? So someone's going to be taking the foam roll, hitting the Swiss ball with it. <laughs> They're going to find every other way to use those than what they should be used. So uh, getting the equipment in the in the right area, getting the uh, specialist to be able to train the guys and how to use it and when to use it. Um, one quick story I have for you is when we first started with Oxnard Fire, their workers' comp for sixty five firefighters was one point four million. So we looked at the stats after about five years, and it went from one point four million to eight hundred thousand in workers' mm -hmm. comp. So I, I had the idea when I was doing the RFP, I said, hey, I'll just take the difference in the work comp money. Um, <laughs> administration, uh, they, they didn't buy off, risk management didn't buy off on that. But we all know that uh, ounce of prevention is what we found a cure. Um, and that was a very eye-opening for the city council in Oxnard to see that there's actual money saved by that. Because sometimes cities don't get, oh, we're going to pay these guys to come do this service. But what benefit is it to the city? And more importantly, to the guys. You know, if you have a workforce, um, I'll go into another story. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, the Ames, which was the work comp carrier for the city of Oxnard, one of the gentlemen there uh, did their stats and 
their cumulative trauma was the lowest he'd ever seen in his 20 plus years of doing insurance. Uh, and, and he said, what's that do to? And Darwin Bass, who was the chief at the time, uh, said, well, we have this wellness program. So uh, this gentleman and I presented the city council and it was uh, eye opening for the new city council members to kind of go, oh, yeah, our firefighters are working out. But these are the tangible benefits. Look, we have our insurance carrier who's coming to us saying, hey, you guys are a model city uh, because you take care of your public safety people. And you have very little cumulative trauma injuries. Yeah, I think I think it's rare that in government, especially that there's a win win scenario. And I would say this is one of those times where the city's benefiting because they're they're not spending as much on work comp stuff, and the guys are benefiting because they're healthier and they're smarter and they know how, how to do things better, which is an obvious benefit for them and their families. Kind of a funny question for you guys: What is? And I've wondered this: What is? challenging about working with firefighters that maybe you don't see in your regular practice working with you know regular person that that needs your services what's hard about firefighters or what's unique well, i'll start and then i'll let justin and phil take over since i have a little bit more experience uh one is when you're working with the fire department you have to be flexible early on in our time uh with the fire department with you guys uh we were at city hall if you guys remember and, and then we would go out to the individual stations. Well, that all sounds good, but when you're going to station six, but they just got a call and now you're at the station and no one's there, <laughs> uh, that being flexible in that respect. Uh, the other thing that's unique to Ventura City that we experienced in the last couple of years is just two words, river bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know. Uh, the river bottom fires tend to really put a, a wrench in our spokes when we're doing our wellness program. Gotcha. So that was a very politically correct answer. I was looking for like, how, you know, our firemen generally think they know everything, very type A, don't want to listen. Do you see any of that from your perspective, trying to get these guys to, okay, I want you to hop on one foot and I want you to straighten your back out and I need you to, you know, any any funny stories related to stuff like that? I mean, I don't know about stories, but we run into it all the time. I mean, I, I, I was going to say time obviously is the number one, but I think just kind of the, the goofball nature of all you guys, like just joking. So I'm just like, Hey, all right, let's go to our treadmill test. 30 minutes later, they're just telling jokes to this guy. And you're just like, uh, like, <laughs> like we got to get going. We got to get going. So just like timely in that sense too, is like, like they're, they're, they just get so caught up. They, I feel like when we, when we get them for the wellness, they run into each other. They're maybe at stations that they wouldn't normally be at. So they're just, they're just catching up uh, with each other. They're, 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 kind of just, just goofing off essentially and telling each other jokes and telling each other what happened and on what calls. Um, but yeah, sometimes, I mean, I think the seriousness is like, I'll demo out a drill, like laying down on the ground, doing a glute bridge, you're laying on your back, you're driving your hips up. And I'm like, am I just like humping the air? And I'm just like, Oh, that was, <laughs> that was very blatant there. welcome to the fire station. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's kind of like dirty humor pretty much all the time. Any, any exercise, I got to be careful how I demo it and, Kind of sometimes I just demo it really quick and see if they'll they'll, they'll make a comment on it because I, I know I'm expecting like all right someone's gonna say like it looks like I'm I'm doing something funny here or something not right. Uh, but. And we got rid of the shake weight things. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably just a matter of uh, you getting to know the guys of being in the stations more too and knowing which guy is gonna gonna be okay with you and bring that up. Um, Phil specifically to Phil, what are I would say what are the common injuries? that you're seeing more and more. And I could probably blame some of them on what Jim said, the river bottom. I know, I know that a lot of that overhead stuff and the trip and fall stuff happens, but um, what do you see that's super common with firefighters and then maybe stuff that you do for treatment and then what you recommend for prevention and for us at home, that would be easy stuff to, to, to be okay with those normal uh, regular injuries you see. Yeah, I'd say probably the biggest thing that we see, and this is, you know, general population as well, but uh, a lot with firefighters is going to be your low back injury and kind of back type of issues. And that's just because, you know, in the fire service, I, I, I don't have to tell you guys, there's a lot of lifting, you know, there's a lot of situations to where you may not be in an ideal situation and you have to pick somebody up and move them or lift a piece of heavy equipment. Um, other injuries, I mean, you know, for the river bottoms, ankle sprains, you know, strains, fractures. You know, we, we have guys who have, you know, tragic incidents where they're fall and, and, you know, end up having to get surgeries. So we, we kind of see it all. And you guys do the full rehab too, right? After surgery, 
your is your place one of the one of the places that we can go for for the full rehab and therapy and everything yeah and that's you know that's really one of the the big benefits that that we have is that we do have the physical therapy side of this so you know say if somebody does go in and they they get a surgery they can come see jim and i and and we start that rehab right away okay as far as stuff we can do at home injury prevention stuff that you'd say man i wish these guys would be doing more of this at home so we don't have to do it every time they come in I, I think one of the bigger things that we try to focus on right off the bat is mobility. So getting back, you know, range of motion, depending on the joint that's injured, if it's an ankle, if it's a back, if it's, you know, hip or shoulder, we can do some things in the clinic to really help get that that joint moving a little bit better and, and get your pain down. And then over time, you know, we start this progressive loading. And then eventually kind of the way that we structure it is they'll get to a point to where, you know, they're ready to kind of get into the strength and conditioning side of it or the performance side of it. And that's where, you know, we're, we're lucky to have Justin involved too, to where now we can progress you guys back to some of the more demanding lifting, fire specific performance side of things. Okay, good. So follow up to that. When Jim says, come to the office, when can you see me? Can you tell us what is different about you can do in the office as opposed to exercises that you give us to take home? Well, it's um, it's it's more of a gym type setting. So whenever you come into the clinic, you know, we can do a little bit more of a thorough evaluation. We have different tools, different things in there to where we can perform some strength testing, perform some range of motion testing so we can kind of evaluate you know, how, how you're moving. And, and we can just do that in a little bit more of a complete way when we have you in the clinic. Other things that we utilize um, are, are modalities. So let's say if you have a, a very acute injury, let's, let's just use a, a rolled ankle as an example. It's inflamed, it's red, it's swollen. We can use, uh, you know, stem, we could use soft tissue tools. We can um, use a lot of uh, different types of equipment to get that to, you know, recover a little bit quicker than you could do in, in a fire station. That was kind of my next question. Is that, is that equal quicker recovery? Yeah, that's, um, so, so really it, it does. And it's, you know, that's, that's one of the other benefits, you know, to us come, getting a chance to come and, um, work with fire department quarterly is you, you guys know there's, there's a lot of injuries that happen that, you know, kind of go unchecked. And I think that's, that's another thing that can kind of be difficult is whenever you, you work with a, a population of, of guys who are really, you know, type A really into, their job and making sure that they show up to work every day. Sometimes those injuries, you know, they don't get checked and that's where we come in and, you know, Jim, you know, we'll get on the guys and say, Hey, when, when can we see you in the clinic? Or I'll say, Hey, you know, can you come in and see us? And that's, that's really the goal of that is so that we can help, you know, get these injuries taken care of and get everybody back to work a little bit quicker. Cool. Yeah. Good. And then follow up to that. I know you said something about, and then we can get you back to Justin and working out what kind of programming, are you doing, I know you work at the sports academy also, right? In Thousand Oaks? Yes. So what kind of programming are you doing specific to the fire department that maybe you wouldn't be doing at the sports academy or just, is it super similar or, or, or what are you doing as far as job specific? Uh, as far as job specific, so here at sports academy, we have the opportunity to work with uh, Ventura County pre-academy. So obviously, we like like I mentioned earlier, we, we deal with kind of all levels, whether it's gen pop, youth, uh, athletics, professional athletes, tactical athletes. Um, but I would say as far as programming, exactly what we're going to program here is what we're going to try to program out there. Obviously, the biggest thing is going to be like equipment. Obviously, in, a, in sports academy, we have high end uh, equipment here that probably wouldn't see at a t- traditional fire station. Um, so that will be one factor of how I would program. Um, but as far as like what I guess phases uh, somebody would be. And those would kind of all be the same. You'd probably have someone who would start in maybe a general, general physical preparation phase, a foundational phase, um, strength based phase, power phase. So th- those phases kind of all stay the same. It just kind of depends on honestly, the, the athlete that we're working with or the, or the person that we're working with it, what is their current capacity uh, and then what are their demands? So obviously in the fire services, the demands is, is high. I mean, there, there's an aerobic demand, there's an anaerobic demand, there's a strength demand, there's a muscular endurance. So there's, there's all these demands that we have to make sure that we're preparing the individual for, um, especially if they're coming off of an injury or if there's somebody that's in the pre-academy that wants to one day become a firefighter, but maybe they just, they, they saw some cool videos online. They're like, Oh, cool. I want to do that. And they're just like, I work out in the gym. I bench press, I do this. So they, they have like this kind of false reality, especially even some of the physical preparation tests for the fire department. It's like, 
they do those tests and they think like, oh, cool, I'm prepared, I'm ready to go. But in reality, I think we all understand that once Academy hits, they're like, whoa, this is way harder than I thought. So I think I think that the programming that we're doing is kind of going to be around the same for everybody. It just kind of it depends on what the demands are. What do we have to understand what the demands that this person needs to train for and then also kind of assess where their current capacity is at. Hey, this is Joe Booth from the Ventura Fire Foundation. To learn more about the foundation and our programs, visit our website at www.venturafirefoundation.org. 100% of our funding comes from generous donors. If you like what we're doing, I encourage you to become a donor. It's very easy. Just go to our website. Again, that's venturafirefoundation.org and click the red donate button at the top. Whether it's $5 or $5,000, every donation helps ensure local firefighters thrive. Phil, you mentioned something about mobility and how important mobility is. I, I want to talk about that a little bit. So after I left the fire department, I um, I don't know how I got turned on to this thing. It's called the Ready State. It's a, a guy, Ke- Kelly Starlet. I don't know. Have you guys heard of this? Mm-hmm. So I'm a big fan of this guy and I do, I, so one of my goals for 2023 is to every single day, 365 days is to do his daily mobility. And you go on there and he has a, it's either 10, 20 or 30 minutes and you just hit play on the video and then you follow along and do it. For me, it's been a game changer. Cause like, I never really focused on mobility. Like, well, I don't, my shoulder's supposed to do what? And my hips are supposed to do this and my toes. Like, I mean, he goes crazy. He like mobilizes your abdomen, which I've never, ever done. But can you speak to that? I wish I would have like been turned on to that. Like when I was at the fire department, because I feel like it would have been really helpful because it's like, it's helped me with a lot of my injuries and aches and just body getting beat up at the fire department for 20 years. So let's speak to that. Yeah, I mean mobility it's it's huge. It's really important. It's it's one of those things to where, you know, generally we we don't know that our mobility is so poor until we go and try and do something and we can't do it, right? It's whether it's reaching overhead, whether it's, you know, trying to do a pull up or maybe doing a squat or hinging at the hips. If we have tissues that are restricted, then we can't move or we we can't perform, you know, certain things that we need to do from day to day. So, yeah, daily mobility is is absolutely huge. I you know, I I think probably you're not the only one <laughs> who has issues with mobility. I I struggle from day to day, and I think that um, it's something that very very important in the fire services as well. And you have experience, or you you know who the who, what that program is, or oh yeah, Doctor Doctor Kelly Shred. He's you know a pioneer of kind of this mobility movement, um, and it's really what it is. Is he has put together many different resources for individuals everywhere to, you know, better their mobility, whether it's, you know, use of soft tissue mobilization, whether it's banded mobilizations, whether it's static stretching, dynamic stretching, there's, there's a lot of different tools that have been outlined that that can really help individuals move better and, and, you know, perform different types of movements. So, yeah. We'll link to it at least, because I think it would be very beneficial to, to all the guys, to anybody really to, and it's so quick and easy. You could literally do it at any point during the day. The other thing too is it's it's super functional, right? And and Justin will kind of, you know, could probably go off of this a little bit, but there's certain things that you have to be able to do. I mean, you you have to be able to squat, you have to be able to hinge your hips. If you're a firefighter and you're going on, you know, a call, there's a chance that you may need to be able to lift a heavy weight overhead. And if your tissues are restricted or your mobility isn't, you know, what it should be, that's something that we need to work on so that when you get into those types of situations, you can do that well. One of the things that I'd like to see happen on top of, of what you're saying, Phil and, and Pete, as far as mobility, I'd like to get Justin, and we've talked about this before too, but I'd like to get Justin to program a couple workouts a week um, for the station. And then we could get Peter's link and we could do a couple mobility workouts at night or something like that. And by the way, once you're retired, it must be nice to be able to want to do that every single day of the year, Pete. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> It's a challenge. I was just going to follow up with Peter. I was going to say, how, how did you, like, what was the turning point that made you want to focus on mobility? Was it the the name or did you get feedback about this Kelly Sarek guy? Or I guess, I guess what, what, what changed your mindset um, from being somebody that maybe didn't want to do mobility to like, wow, I need to do this. Or what, what was the eye-opening moment? 
Yeah. So for me, it was when I left the fire department, I joined a CrossFit gym in here in town called The Vent. And they're like drunk on this ready state stuff. And like, which is what I liked about it. Like you go in there and I'm not a big fan of like, you know, no offense, Justin, like meathead weightlifting, like, you know, in the gym all the time. Like, it's just not me. So I went over there and because I was looking for somewhere to work out after I left the fire department because, you know, it's easy, easier when you're at the fire department all the time. But so when I was there, it was like, wait, this is a CrossFit gym and everybody's got bands out and rolling this out and that out. And they're talking about it and they're, they won't, you know, they're really big on it. And I go, okay, well, let me look into this. And they turned me onto it and that kind of, kind of took off from there. But what I like about that hit that guy, Kelly star or whatever is you could go, my knee is messed up. It really hurts. And you can tap into his app, like knee pain. And I have 10 minutes and he'll give you some stuff to do just for your knee. But the reality is it's rarely the knee. It's like above the knee, below the knee, your ankle, what it, like just stuff that I as a layman would never think of like, oh, my shoulder's hurting. Well, I need to do my lat and my this and stuff like that for someone, for a dumb fireman who's trying to figure out how to fix their pains. It's really good for it. Whereas obviously you guys could go, oh, well, you need to think about this and this and that. But some guy in the station who's who doesn't have the background you have, I think it's super beneficial. And you lose some of that, right, Pete? When you when you retire, you lose some of that contact with the trainers that we have the advantage of having yeah. in the stations. And, and you know, previously um, you talked about CrossFit. I remember the origin of I think maybe the right when Jim joined our department was everybody was CrossFit was a huge revolution and rage, and the origins of CrossFit were injuries. Like a, as soon as CrossFit hit. It was like, oh, cool. This guy's really into CrossFit. We know we're going to get some overtime because he's not going to be here very much coming up. (laughs) Yeah. So can can you guys talk about where CrossFit was and maybe where it's – I don't even know if you'd call it CrossFit anymore. It's really evolved into um, like exercises for specific modalities that you work with, it seems like, more than anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, as far as CrossFit, I mean, nothing bad against it. I, I always say it, there's bad coaches. There's not really a bad, like CrossFit has this bad reputation of you're going to get injured. You're going to do that. The same at the end of the day, it, 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 it's a, it's something that they've turned into a sport and it's, it's, I mean, the sport is lifting weights and obviously it's, it's expanded to swimming, to climbing, to, to doing all these uh, crazy tasks now. But as far as like, the injury part, I mean, you're going to see injuries in any sport. I mean, we're, we're still seeing it in pro sports. You're going to see injuries no matter where you go. Were they more prevalent? Yeah, I think it was just it, – it created such a big culture. Like you could be someone who maybe isn't really fast or good at certain sports and you can just jump into a CrossFit box gym and you can kind of fit right in. You can kind of develop into the same culture of like, hey, we're all here to get better. We're all here to work on this. Um working out as a group. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting more of that, that, that team environment without having to, like I said, be quote unquote, like an athlete where you're running and changing direction and catching a ball or, or, or whatnot. But yeah, I, I think, I think it gets a bad reputation sometimes because people are like, Oh, he's doing CrossFit. He's going to get injured. Um, I mean, yeah. And that's where like the, the mobility stuff comes in. It's, it's high volume, it's high intensity at times, but it's kind of dependent on the coach. Some coaches may just, throw a hard workout at you and it's their their goal is to just make you hurt and make you cry. And some coaches are more like, well, I can, you can make anybody sweat, but how can you make somebody better? And and I think that's where you're going to find the great coaches is someone that's not trying to make you sore all the time. Someone that's not trying to defeat your soul or take your soul after every single workout. It's sometimes when you came in, you didn't feel good. You left, you, you feel like you worked, but you actually feel better than when you came in. And I think that's, that's what, what what speaks a lot amongst a coach is someone who's not just trying to destroy you, but someone who's actually trying to physically work on kind of making you better each and every day versus making you puke or cry or bleed every single day. Just for the record, that never happens in the fire department, especially <laughs> in, in the fire academy. That never happens. Never, never even right. heard. Never even heard of such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> No, I like what you said about there's not bad workouts, just just bad coaches and better coaches. That that was good. That with the pre academy and when you work with the pre academy, Justin, like trying to get these guys and girls to like understand like what they're in for. Like, how hard is it to replicate like the true experience that they're going to have? Yeah, it's it's challenging. Um, I mean, we have when I see somebody, we usually get like I said, we we try and assess where their current capacity is. So we do like a, a battery of tests, whether it's a strength test, muscular endurance tests, uh, cardiovascular tests, 
And then based off of that, I mean, we've kind of developed some standards. This is all just uh, purely kind of for like Ventura County specifically. So it could, all these testing their batteries or group of tests could change depending on what department you're with. Um, but we've, we've, we, we create a good battery of tests that we think will help prepare a candidate for Ventura County's tower. So just based off all that, um, I mean, we're able to identify based off of just that first session of how successful somebody might be. Um, like I said, just looking at just the basic physical parameters. Obviously there's more to it than just the physical side of getting through an academy. There's a mental side, there's the, the stress, there's the day in, day out. Um, so when people come in here and they work out with me for an hour, two hours, I'm like, that's great and all, but just remember like the academy is going to be different. This is a, a eight plus hour day that you're going to be doing for four to five days a week. Um, probably not going to be sleeping. Your free time is dedicated to studying. So that's the, that, that's the, the stuff that I kind of try to talk them and prep them for. Like, it's really good that you can push yourself for an hour, but just know that it's more like the, the cumulative, like day to day stuff. It's not like you're going to go in there in the academy and they're going to push you really hard for an hour. And then you get to go home and lay down and chill on the couch. It's, it's, it's a little different. So that's, that's probably the hardest part to get to those recruits is not to give it all in one, but to understand this is an accumulation. And then also just to understand like to focus on the qualities. Obviously my goal, they're not here to be, professional weightlifters or be really good at weightlifting. Their goal is just to develop a good physical base because if I can get them stronger, more fit, and, and they can come to to the department as, as a quote unquote more of a physical specimen, it's easier to teach the skills. If you have somebody that's weak and can't do the task because of strength, no matter how much technique you teach them, no matter how much you work with them, it's just going to be hard. It's going to be really difficult to, to, to learn the skill if you don't have the base level of, of fitness. Do you guys do anything on the mental preparation? Are you screaming at them or yelling at them or anything or no? I I am not somebody who's I'm not the drill sergeant boot camp kind of kind of instructor, but we do have like a like a cognitive app and there and there's been uh kind of thoughts in my head is like maybe I should try and uh I don't know get some flashcards from some of these people that have been through the academy and <laughs> just start quizzing them like after they get off the assault bike, hey, get on the assault bike for 30 minutes, go all out, burn whatever 20 calories. And then maybe I just, I quiz them like, Hey, where's station 16 at? Hey, where's, where's this at? How, how, how many, how, and just, just to see, I mean, that's a, a thought in my head. I haven't incorpororated it yet, but I, I, there's a strong consideration to. There is a part of um, some of the physical agility tests where they have you go all out for, for something. And then they have you like do some intricate stuff with your hands, like put hose couplings together and stuff like that. And it's interesting that you just, that you just said that. What is the next iteration of performance wellness and injury prevention? Like, I think we've made a ton of great progress and the program's awesome and beneficial, but like, what's, what's next? What, where, where does this go next? Is the, is the plan just to go to more fire departments or is it to take it, you know, for our department specifically, like take it further, add more, like what vision do you have for it? Probably the next step is, is us getting together and, and, you know, trying to think of what more can we bring to the fire departments that we're serving. So, you know, Justin, Jim and I have, you know, put together a lot of online content that we're hoping to get out to the fire departments to, you know, start to look at maybe some of these things such as mobility, such as, you know, strength, um, such as conditioning to, to kind of give the guys a little bit more of a resource so that in their off time, whenever we're not there visiting, um, they can work on some of this stuff on their own. Um, you know, with with fitness and wellness, there's many different things that we can do to try and further progress with fire departments and and give as many different resources as we can. So, really, the sky's the limit. I would say that um, your guys's work like goes hand in hand with what the foundation is cares about, right? Which is taking care of the guys, making sure that they can you know, run the marathon all the way to retirement uninjured. I would just say we should probably have conversations around, you know, how the foundation can get involved with what you guys are doing and, and what kind of things could could we offer through the foundation that maybe we can't offer through the fire department or something along those lines. I think there's an opportunity there that would support kind of both of our missions because I mean, let's be honest, the physical health is, is just one part of it, right? There's a, there's a whole other side of this. There's multiple sides of this, but I think that it's hard. I know when I was, when I was in the program, you know, I didn't take it as seriously maybe as I should have. And I think that probably is relatively common. Like, you know, when we come quarterly or you do one annual, like it doesn't really work unless you're putting the work in on your own 
to to supplement the stuff that we're doing. But I don't have something in mind, but I think there's there's some way that our foundation could probably work closer with you guys to come up with something that kind of is beneficial for the guys. We can't just do one workout every three months and call it good, Pete. Well, I tried. I tried for like 10 years and it worked most of the time, but there was a couple of times it didn't work. (laughs) Jim, you have something to say? I I can speak to the evolution having gone from a a situation where talking to a fire chief back in the early 2000s, he was penalized for working out at work. He was one of the only ones back. This is going back to the early 70s. Uh, but he would be doing push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and everything. And his fire captain uh, used to ream him for for working out. And and seeing that part evolve to what we've got, got now in the fire stations, I know Phil and Justin are going together in the videos that they're creating for the fire guys as well. Yeah, yeah. I think Phil touched on it a little bit, but like the the digital side. I mean, as we talked about earlier, it's really hard to get in front of somebody and provide like some good one-on-one attention or just a a really good plan. So, I mean, just being able to connect digitally, whether it's through text, through email, through maybe um, a programming app, but something where we could still stay in contact with the firefighter or whoever it may be, just so we can continue to touch base. I mean, for me, I think the biggest thing is going to be consistency. Like I said, the, the coming out, uh, quarterly doing a workout. It's great and all. And I think the goal of that is like introducing new movements. Maybe it sparks interest and like, okay, I felt good doing this. Let me start this up again. But the reality is I I think we need to just continue to to figure out a way of how can we kind of keep some accountability on the person and get them to be a little bit more consistent because they don't need to do a crazy high intensity workout every single day. It's just, it's just, how can we, how can we make sure they're doing something to better themselves? Whether, like you said, Peter mentioned earlier, which is mobility maybe they just come in and do mobility or maybe they feel really good and they want to push that circuit but having the digital realm to just stay in contact with these people and maybe even track their progress if they want to send what they did or if it's programming app you can kind of watch what they did in their workout but i think that's going to be the big push because i mean me phil jim i mean we're only three people and we i mean i think our goal is going to be to impact and help as many people as we can but i mean with with limited time, with limited people, it's going to be hard. But with a digital platform, which I'm, I'm sure we're seeing everybody's digital platforms growing, growing huge out there, it's it, that that's going to be the biggest way to to make impacts across multiple fire departments. I love that. I think that that's kind of what I've been begging for is more more from you guys, and then you know some kind of uh, um, accountability, like you're saying. One of the things that the foundation focuses on a ton is mental health, and then when we talk to these. MFTs or or psychologists, their response is always part of your mental health workout is being physical and working out and getting that release and that endorphin rush and all that stuff to make you feel better. Can any, any of you guys talk specifically about that? Because I know we focus a lot on that on, uh, with the foundation. Yeah, I mean, definitely working out. I mean, I'm sure we've all gone through a workout and you've gotten, like you said, the endorphin rush and you, you just feel on top of the world. You feel good. And I think that's, that's definitely a underutilized aspect of physical fitness is just the mental side. You just, you just went into the gym, you cleared your head, you, you got to think about whatever you got to think about. Um, you got to kind of go to your, go to your, your meditation. It's not meditation. If you're sweating, sweating and working, working your butt off. But I mean, it, it, it kind of is because you're, you're in your own realm. You're focused on yourself for that one hour or, or however long you're working out. So I, I think it's huge. I mean, you, you look at the benefits of exercise. It's, it's the fountain of youth. I mean, it, it's, it slows the aging process down. It helps prevent diseases. I mean, the list goes on. It, it helps with everything that you do. And I think it goes hand in hand with the mental health. If you, if you're physically fit, it's going to help with that. Yeah, I think you're right. And I was going to uh, piggyback on that, Justin. I mean, the highest risk for the firefighters for public safety is cardiovascular disease. You know, you got your strokes, your cancers, as well as suicides that I know you guys have been talking about uh, here recently, is that exercise plays a key component in the help prevent all of that stuff. And that's just one cog in the wheel. Exercise also makes you a more resilient individual, you know, and it helps whenever you come into certain calls or certain situations. Um, if, if you have had maybe a workout in, or if you're consistent with your workouts, it's going to help you, you know, be able to take on any certain situations a little bit better because you're, you're more resilient. So that's all I was going to add to that. I appreciate that. So specifically, 
Do you guys have recommendations for the general firefighter as far as, uh, I mean, uh, some of this is kind of obvious, but time of day that you prefer working out, how long would you prefer weight bearing or just cardio, a mix of everything and intensity and go ahead and get into that stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it, one, it depends on the, 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 the I'm always, always going to answer it. It depends. That's so why I apologize, but I will get to the, I'll give you a direct answer, but it, it kind of depends on what the individual's goals are, where their capacity's at. But if we're talking about like, just let's say job performance or someone who's a, who's in the fire industry or, or a firefighter themselves, I would say that you definitely want to balance. I mean, I, I think what the fire department or the our fire departments are really good with is pushing the cardiovascular and the aerobic. And then what I tend to see is, is the kind of the lack of um, maybe strength and power exercises, obviously, which is kind of my big key component is like, I want to make sure that those are the big rocks in, in, in the program. Obviously there's variations. We don't all have to have a barbell back squat and do it the same way as whatever, some power lifter, but we do, we, we do need to pick a squat variation. There needs to be a means of progression to it. So we definitely want to make sure that we're, we're, we're hitting certain movements. Um, but strength and power, I feel like are kind of, whether it's, it's lack of knowledge or um, maybe they just feel like their technique is not great, but there's always going to be a variation out there for somebody and we can always progress it to a more intense or more lo- ability to, to handle a little bit more loads. But I think those are going to be what are lacking probably the most that I would say. Um, but you definitely want to make sure there's some mobility in there. There's some type of correctives where you're trying to work on whatever your imbalances or your weaknesses are. And then I, I'm a big believer that you do need power. I mean, a lot of the stuff you guys do out there on the fire grounds, all the tasks, they are power related, whether you like to, whether you think you're going full speed or not. I mean, you're swinging a tool, carrying stuff upstairs, that all requires power to do that. And then strength, like Phil mentioned earlier, uh, strength is going to be resiliency. If you're a strong individual, you're going to be less likely to get injured on the job and you're going to have a, a higher tissue tolerance. And then obviously, like we mentioned, the, the aerobic part, um, if you, there's going to be calls where they're long, where you're going to be out there for a long period of time, whether you're doing overhaul, whether you're fighting a fire for a long time, like there's going to need to be endurance in there as well. So I I think it's definitely a mix. And what I see more so uh, lacking is is just the strength and the power. And then obviously the mobility, because the mobility is not, it's not fun. It's not sexy. Nobody wants to sit on a foam roller or do some corrective exercises or, or whatever it might be. Nobody really wants to take that time. They kind of want to just get right into the meat of the workout and push themselves and sweat. Jim, I want to switch gears. I got some questions for you. Um, you recently joined the foundation board, which we're very excited to have you a part of the board, but I kind of want to ask you some perspective questions. So clearly, I mean, you have longstanding relationships in the, in the local fire service, but maybe this, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot here and I apologize. And I guess we could edit this out if, if we need to, but um, what's something about working internally with the foundation now that you didn't maybe expect or something that our listeners who, you know, cause to be honest, firefighters in general, we don't, I feel like we don't do the best job of, of like promoting ourselves and what we're doing and, you know, the good work that we're doing. We've been doing much better, especially with the addition of, of Joe, you know, on the team, but what what's kind of your perspective from coming from the outside to now, you know, on the board of the foundation, just maybe some general thoughts or some things that we're involved in that maybe the general person wouldn't know, or just from your unique perspective. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I first became aware of the foundation based on some events that I attended. And I thought it was a great way. You have a great uh, spousal support, let's say, to put things together. I remember back in the day, Kevin Rennie doing a golf tournament and raising some funds uh, at that point. But I think that the challenging thing that uh, being on the board is seeing some of these great ideas. And there's five of us in the room and I'm not working a 40 hour week, but like uh, Jason, or you have another firefighter there that just got off a 72 hour shift and they're coming in and trying to say, oh, yeah, we want more of your time, right? And it's the whole paradigm of in an organization, 10% of the people do 90% of the work Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it's unique to the fire service. It happens in the physical therapy and athletic training um, positions too. But I'm encouraged because I see a lot of great ideas. And it's like sometimes daunting the degree that we want to like take this project over. It's awesome. But you're thinking, okay, it's kind of like in our field. 
like Justin and, and Phil and I will get together and go, yeah, we want to do like a 30 for 30. We're going to do these videos, you know, 30 videos and, and we're going to do, you guys work 10 shifts a month. So we're going to do 10 and have this, this, this. Well, when you start putting it to paper, like you guys with the podcast, it's a little more overwhelming than what you think going into it. So I think people uh, in general don't realize how much work goes on beyond behind the scenes. Like you guys, uh, you guys just did a spousal support group and opening up my eyes too. I think this new thing, Pete, that you were talking about with the sleep deprivation um, and the effects that that has on firefighters. I think that's an untapped area that it's out there. There's, there's some stuff definitely on it but it hasn't been addressed a lot of stuff in the last 10 years um the mental health issues are just now starting to get addressed yeah no that that's good perspective it's it's there's no lack of ideas right it's it's a lack of capacity for the most part because <laughs> it, it, when when we have a 100% volunteer board and and prior to joe coming on you know there was no there was no staff to do things i mean it's really hard especially with you know prior to you, Jim and April coming on, it was all firefighters working. It was like, it was really difficult to, to carve off any meaningful amount of time to put an actual effort into, to moving the ball down the field. But that's hopefully changing as we grow our board. And and Joe's been a a game changer for us as well. But yeah, I I just know from our perspective, it's been nice to bring somebody from the outside of our world, kind of like, cause I do consider you like, kind of an insider just because of the the relationship you have with everybody for all these years on your working side, but definitely a breath of fresh air. So see different ideas, you know, you bring some business acumen to the board, which is needed as well. So yeah, but I'm, I'm stoked you're here and hopefully you stick around for a while and you keep bringing good ideas and we, we make some, some good stuff. And to speak to what you're saying about how hard it is to like get things off the ground. I mean, it's a struggle because I personally want to do a ton of things, but, uh, it, you know, I think the rest of the board constantly is, is pulling me back a little because it does take a lot of effort and a lot of work. And, you know, if we had unlimited funds, we could do a heck of a lot of good stuff, but that's just not reality. Maybe one day. And hopefully we get a lot of listeners and they decide to, to donate, which by the way, they can go to our, our, our website to make a donation if you're hearing this and you, you feel so moved. But anyhow, Jason, any, anything else you want to make sure we hit on before we wrap it up or? Just one of the things that that Jim just said about having this recent event with other spouses and growing, doing more events that we want to do, trying to include other departments. We had uh, multiple department spouses come to this event last a few weeks ago. Our last one was, and um, that was cool. Seeing seeing fundraisers and things going on all around us, we try to get involved and be a part of all that stuff. But yeah, other than that, having our guests on today was was a different topic than we usually cover. Very necessary. I'm going to continue to fight to uh, get as many guys on your sign in sheet as I can every time. Like I always try to do as far as getting guys to be on time and ready to go, Justin, good luck. (laughs) I would say that uh, on a 48 hour shift, we look around at each other and we're like, Oh, we're not really in a rush. Let's, let's hang out with each other. We never get to see each other. And, And we look at you guys and it's like, Hey, you know, we'd like to go home at some point today. Yeah, I get that too. So anyway, I appreciate what you guys do a ton, man. I'm I'm so glad that you guys are involved and that, that Jim, you made your team who it is. Because when I first heard about the wellness program, it was more um, intimidation that these couple 30 to 40 year old meathead dudes would show up and order you around and tell you what you should be doing. And that's not at all what your company is. It is definitely revolved around um, how can we make the firefighters the best they can be. And I I really appreciate that aspect of it. And as far as the uh, Sports Academy in Thousand Oaks, I also wanted to to, uh, tell our listeners that our our firefighters that uh, get hired go through that with the Ventura County people as well. So they're familiar as well. But that's all the wrap up I got. Anything else? uh, for many of you guys that you wanted to cover? I, I would just say that uh, for anybody listening that, that thinks about a wellness program with the Fire Department of Public Safety, um, and, and Phil knows my speech by well by now, uh, but there are th- three questions that you got to answer with any kind of relationship. Number one, can I trust you? Number two, are you committed? And number three, do you care? 
And so when I talk to my employees and my staff, those are the three things that, that make us, I think, unique. And that Justin uh, and Phil and I can sit down and we trust each other. We're committed, obviously, Justin and Phil expanding this program, committed to excellence. I'll take one from Al Davis. And then the last one, care about me. And I think that's with our patients as well. It's like we care about what we do. Um, so those are the, I just wanted to hammer those three points home again for yeah and I'll, I'll i'll just speak to that it it shines through there's no doubt i don't think in anybody's mind uh, on whether or not you guys care whether or not you're committed whether or not they trust you a plus on all those from from my perspective and i think i speak for a lot of the guys as well so well this has been awesome thank you jim for all the work you do for the foundation justin phil likewise you guys are awesome thank you so much Wow, that was a that was a pretty good show. I mean, the the amount of work and effort that Jim and his team put into just trying to keep us healthy is pretty it's pretty impressive. They they put a lot of thought into it. One of the things that Jim said that I'm going to hold on to personally and that he has fulfilled his goal and his mission when he says, ask yourself those three questions to make it worth it. Trust, commitment and care. Those shine through in everything that he does and I think it's a great testament to who he is. And the other thing that I was kind of surprised at was how much we talked about mobility. I know that you kind of brought that up. And then those therapists, they, they really grabbed a hold of that and, and saw the value in that. So that was cool. We'll have to link that to the show. Yeah. So I've been all in on this Ready State app for, well, I started like mid-December and have not missed a day. I'm definitely geeking out on it. And I, I wanted to talk to those guys about it. And I'm actually happy that they knew who he was. It was going to be awkward if they go, I've never heard of that person. But <laughs> yeah, mobility, I know for me, has been a game changer for my own, like just moving around and not so many aches and bumps and bruises. But yeah, it's the Ready State. It's an app. We'll have to put the link below. Definitely beneficial for everybody. Is that a uh, firefighter friendly app, a.k.a.? How much does it cost? <laughs> it's actually not free. I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something. I don't, okay. don't hold me to that. I think it, not bad, it, it, not there bad. is a cost to it. Anyhow, so yeah, I guess our next episode, we have Chief and Daya. I unfortunately am not going to be there. So we got that to look forward to. And then um, what else? I think the ball, right? Yeah, the Fire Foundation ball, April 21st. Um, I don't know if people are looking forward to you not being there next episode or if that's a good or a bad thing. I think that remains to be seen. I I will feel very judged either way, but uh, I'm looking forward to, to talking to Chief and and seeing where kind of his view of the department and what's coming up for the for the department is general in general. I'm glad that he was willing to meet with us. Uh, but yeah, the, the foundation ball on the 21st, we're looking for sponsors. If that's something that you know somebody or you are a business owner, please contact our foundation at VenturaFireFoundation.org. And you can contact our executive director, Joe, directly through that as well. And, and we'll get you hooked up and we'll get you some tickets to the ball if you want to sponsor as well. Sounds good. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate your time. Have a good week. <laughs>